Yo, what's up, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we are almost done with this series, man. Then we start House of the Dragon, and and I'm ready to go. Uh, once again, I'm loving this. I'm loving this series. There's obviously a couple of plot holes here and there, especially when you guys point them out and stuff. But to I be can expected. trip in a plot hole every now and then, you know? Yeah, for sure. I can ride my tire over one every now and then. No big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got suspension on the whip. It's all good. <laughs> um, yeah, guys, basically, we're just loving this series, though, man. I think that the diehards out there, I, I understand maybe it's not what you expected or what you thought it should be and all that. And I understand that. But I don't really know what to expect at this point because I feel like with two Two episodes left we're nowhere near a conclusion right because but, it's like in the heat of something you know what i'm saying well we're right <laughs> in the middle of the throes of the prime of their lives in yeah a way, so <laughs> i don't know man i'm just nervous basically right. at the end of the day but let's go let's go the true air true air to the iron fleet i'm just kidding <laughs> Oh, you fire with the quill, though. So that man's snitching. <laughs> Come in. That reminds me of Survivor, doesn't it, you? Nothing. She won't eat. She won't eat. Is that a little bird? We'll try again, Sapna. I think they're watching me. Who? Her soldiers. Of course they are. That's their job. She won't oh, eat. Don't. Yeah, I'm wondering who's Great the she. Place. Go on. They'll be missing you in the kitchen. Wasn't it Varys who tried to poison her before? Yeah, but I'm wondering, is it, it's not, is it Cersei or Daenerys that he's trying to poison? Her? Daenerys, because they're far away from Cersei. True that. Well, that's jacked up because he's like on her team. The Northern Armies just crossed the Trident. They'll be at the walls of King's Landing in two days. How is she? She hasn't seen anyone since we returned. Hasn't left her chambers. Hasn't accepted any food. Confirmed, you're right. She shouldn't be alone. You're worried for her. I admire your empathy. Aren't you worried for it? I'm worried for all of us. They say every time a Targaryen is born, the gods toss a coin and the world holds its breath. You're not much for riddles where I'm from. <laughs> we both know what she's about to do. That's her decision to make. She is our queen. Men decide where power resides, whether or not they know it. What do you want? All I've ever wanted. The right ruler on the Iron Throne. He's for his little birds. I still don't know how her coin has landed. But I'm quite certain about yours. Eds, baby. <laughs> little Aegon. Or, or little wolf tails, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I was thinking Stark Kid. I never have. I have known more kings and queens than any man living. I've heard what they say to crowds and seen what they do in the shadows. I have furthered their designs, however horrible. But what I tell you now is true. You will rule wisely and well, while she... She is my queen. Ooh, cause loyalty, Varys. You know how that goes. He's turning on her pretty hard though, isn't he? Yeah, like, he's like going like, skrr. She said, yo, I will burn you if you betray me. I know, I guess he's like, whatever. Empty promises. He wants to protect the realm. He's just depressed looking. There's something you need to know. Someone has betrayed me. <laughs> yes. Jon Snow. Varys. Oh, he tattled. He knows the truth about Jon. He does. Oh my gosh, Tyrion. That's like your friend, though. Because you told him. You learned from Sansa. Oh. And she learned from Jon, though I begged him not to tell her. As I said, she already knew he betrayed me. I'm glad Sansa told me I am your hand. I need to be aware of any threats you're facing. And Varys? Your master of whisperers needs to be aware too. You spoke to him first, without coming to me, without asking my permission. It was a mistake. Why do you think Sansa told you? What do you think she hoped to gain? She trusts me. Yes, she trusts you. Don't play stupid, Tyrion. She trusted you to spread secrets that could destroy your own queen and you did and you did not let her down because he's little finger jr she's about to freaking kill Tyrion. if i have failed you my queen forgive me our intentions were good we wanted what you want a better world all of us Varys, as much as anyone 
but it doesn't matter now. What? Doesn't matter now. That was vague dialogue, wasn't it? I'm so confused. What's gonna happen? She was mad depressed, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's lost everyone. Tyrion's just let her down. The only one she's really got is Bears John Aegon Snow. I and Grey Worm. Yeah. Dang, he's just non-stop at work. I don't know that top off for a minute. Right. Definitely puts it, you know. Don't tell me, man. Well, I mean, he's trying to poison her, apparently. I know, but I want it better for Varys, man. Me too. If his, his character can't go down like this, maybe it'll just She's be She's about dramatic. to burn him alive, she just said. <sighs> I know, but like, maybe not. Um, quotes. I hope I deserve this. Truly, I do. I hope I'm wrong. Wow, Varys. That was sad, right? Goodbye, old friend. Man. How is Daenerys perceiving that? I don't know. He betrayed the queen and he's giving him sympathy. Like, don't you think Daenerys hates that? I think so. I would think so. But maybe she knew they were longtime buddies. This is like Melisandre Reverse. vibes. I, Daenerys of House Targaryen, first of my name, breaker of chains and mother of dragons. <gasps> oh. oh, they had torches like it was going to be like that, but we should have known better. Man. Tricaris. Oh, he looks personal, don't he? Oh, wow. They're standing so close, you know? And just like that, Varys is gone. One of the greatest characters, though, y'all. Man, he took his licks like a champ, though, didn't he? I didn't even hear him scream. I didn't even see a quiver. He said, I hope, I hope I'm wrong. Oh, my gosh, guys. See, she was red on this the beach. She brought with her when we crossed the narrow sea. Her only possession. Yeah, rid that thing from the earth. Right. That's what she would want. Like so, talking to City of Dragon Botas. What did I say would happen if you told your sister? I don't want it, and that's what I told him. That doesn't matter, John. She betrayed your trust. She killed Varys as much as I did. This is a victory for her. Now she knows what happens when people hear the truth about you. Far more people in Westeros love you than love me. I don't have love here. I only have fear. I love you. And you will always be my queen. That all I am to you. Your queen. Get in there, John. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, what you He's doing? He's being so hesitant. He's probably still thinking about Varys cooking on the grill out there. He's like, damn, if I ever piss you off, you're going <laughs> to burn me. 
That's scary. All right then. All right then. I didn't be fair. The people who live there, they're not your enemies. They're innocents, like the ones you liberated in Marine. In Marine, the slaves turned on the masters and liberated the city themselves the moment I arrived. They're afraid. Anyone who resists Cersei will see his family butchered. You can't expect them to be heroes. They're hostages. They are. In a tyrant's grip, whose fault is that? Mine. What does it matter whose fault it is? Thousands of children will die if the city burns. Your sister knows how to use her enemies' weaknesses against them. That's what she thinks our mercy is. Weakness. I beg she you, really she's does, wrong. Though. Mercy is our strength. Our mercy towards future generations. He will never again be held hostage by a tyrant. Ready the unsullied. Tonight you sail for King's Landing to join the Northern Armies. Cersei's oh. followers will abandon her if they know the war is lost. Give them that chance. If the city surrenders, they will ring the bells and raise the gates. Please, if you hear them ringing the bells, call off the attack. Wait for me outside okay. the city. You'll know when it's time. Was she like fair, kinda? That's her whole philosophy is to be fair. But she like fair about what Tyrion said. She said if it, she hears the bells is over, she'll stop. Mm -hmm. Your brother was stopped trying to get past our lines. Once again, Jamie's kidnapped. Prisoner of war. Hasn't abandoned your sister after That's like three or four times. The next time you fail me. Be the last time you fail me. Mm. That wasn't really failing. That wasn't really Tyrion's fault. So she's really going in on that let it be fear thing, huh? Well, she said they don't love her. Yeah, but you can work on that. <laughs> Give it time, right? <laughs> wow. This music is so gloomy. Who's this? The rear guard should be here by daybreak. Oh, she that wants is. to attack now. Daybreak at the earliest. Yeah, don't attack at night. You can't see it. I need to ask you a favor. You're the greatest smuggler alive, aren't you? I'm not gonna like this favor, am I? <laughs> Never sounds good when it starts with that. <laughs> I'm really sad Varys is gone, so hey, I can't get over it. I know, I'm, I'm Where bummed. Where are you going? I'm Arya Stark. I'm going to kill Queen Cersei. Think about it. She kills Cersei, the war's over. There won't be a siege. You might not even die tomorrow. That was like a Saving Private Ryan quote. <laughs> yeah. I need to go talk to my captain. Go ahead, talk to him. Nikki Mozon, Pradagon Batanaralio. I drink to eat the schoolkeeper. Nikki Jalio, Pradagon Batanaralio. <laughs> Nikki Jalo, uh, Negon, Batana. We speak the common tongue. <laughs> ah, good. I want to be alone with the prisoner. <laughs> Get some rest. Tomorrow will be a long day. He was way off. To guard the prisoner. Ordered by whom? The queen herself? No. Well, in that case, as Hand of the Queen, I outrank whomever gave your order, probably by quite a lot. I would be like, nefarious. <laughs> Very nefarious. I guess they just do what they're told, huh? Mm -hmm. According to Rink. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. How did they find you? I just take it off. Did you consider taking it off? <laughs> Cersei once called me the stupidest Lannister. <laughs> and you're going back to her. To die with her. You've underestimated her before. She's going to die. Unless you can convince her to change her course of action. Difficult to do from here. One more time. But have I ever been able to convince Cersei of anything? Try. Never. If not for yourself, if not for her, then for every one of the million people in that city, innocent or otherwise. To be honest, I never really cared much for them. 
innocent or otherwise. You do care for one innocent. I know you do. And so does Cersei. She has her reason now. The child is the reason she'll never give an inch. All the worst things she's ever done, she's done for her children. It's not impossible that she'll win. She won't. Her enemy's forces have been depleted as she said they would be. Two of the three dragons are dead. She's even the odds. The city will fall tomorrow. She has the Lannister army. She has the gold. I defended company. the city last time it was attacked. I know it better than anyone. It will fall tomorrow. No, I suppose I'll die tomorrow, if not before. Why? Wow. Hey. Escape. The two of you together. Remember where we met? Where they keep the dragon skulls beneath the Red Keep? Take her down there. Keep following the stairways down, down as far as they'll go. You'll come out onto a beach at the foot of the keep. A dinghy will be waiting for you. Sail out of the bay. If the winds are kind, you'll make it to Pentos. Start a new life. Do it. That would be crazy. So they got haircuts and started over. The Iron Fleet and into a new life. Sounds a lot less likely than Cersei. Will. There won't be an Iron Fleet for much longer. Do it. If you don't, you'll never see Cersei again. This was like Where that favor me? before. You have my word. If it works, give the order to ring all the bells in King's Landing and open the gates. Mm. That will be our signal that the city has surrendered. I'll try. Never thought I'd get to repay the favor. Remember, ring the bells and open the gates. Your queen will execute you for this. If Daenerys can make it to the throne without wading through a river of blood, maybe she'll show mercy to the person who made that possible. Yeah, maybe. Wow. <laughs> He's risking his life, dude. Mm -hmm. He just saw what happened. Tens of thousands of innocent lives. One not particularly innocent dwarf. It seems like a fair trade. If it weren't for you, I never would have survived my childhood. Oh no. You would have. You were the only one who didn't treat me like a monster. You were all I had. <laughs> oh. This hurts because it's like for real goodbye because it's like the end of the series. This was one of the best relationships in the series for sure. So deep and interwoven in them. Oh my god, there's like eight million scorpions. And the scorpion king. Be a little sharper, not even gonna lie. <laughs> They're like ready for something aerial, aren't they? Like, look at them. Basically, yeah. They are like locked and loaded. Oh. Hey, dude. So this city's just bracing, man. Y'all sneaky little. Let's go, Arya. So best case scenario, we want Arya to kill Cersei. Right. Okay. And no one gets harmed, right? That's Second best scenario is freaking, they just defeat the army and they surrender. And Jamie gets the word off. And he can convince Cersei to give up. Right. There so, he is. So a lot of good things could happen to on this episode right here. Goat James. Man, you got your golden hand out there, though, Cash. You ain't no assassin, Jamie. Hey, she put the golden company right out front. I, I really pick this pick up on this guy's name right here. I don't know. I'm gonna just guess Thaddeus. <laughs> Thaddeus Young. GC Commander. <laughs> Look at the North remembering over there. Looking mad. If you hear the bells ring, they've surrendered. Call off your men. <laughs> You're like, whose side you on, bro? <laughs> It's crazy to see the North people, the Northmen in the in the South. Hell yeah, they hate the Lannisters, don't they? Mm-hmm. Little revenge time for them. They played the Reigns of Castamere too much on them. Oh. 
This is giving me anxiety, baby. I know. It's just showing all these little kids everywhere. I know. Oh. They didn't get in. You know, after the high septum blew up, I'm, I'm nervous about somebody blowing up somewhere. You know? So maybe it's good she didn't go in there. Too bad Magneto ain't out there. Right. So chill right now. The calm before the storm. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It's not just a seagull. Oh my gosh. Battle time. I, I don't like dodging these things. Oh my. Why ain't he taking the shot though? Ain't he the one who can hit him? I know. <laughs> He's just like. Directing on her? <laughs> I'm glad they oh. picked someone else, honestly. No way. Said I gotta get my Theon on. Right. I wanna see that dragon go snatch Cersei out the damn where she had the red key. Fire! It's crazy that they're just like bigger versions of Joffrey's bow. Yeah. That's nuts. Widow's Widow. <laughs> God, he was an insufferable. Hell yeah. What is oh. dead may never die. House Scorpion, goodbye. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, nope. There's still a few. That's the Golden Company. Man, you better spread that army out. What the heck? Your car is was at the door. Oh, man. Dang, so one blast took out half the Golden Company. There go. They wrecked the wall down. He has a cool sword, though. Oh, you dead, bro. Oh. Dang, they ain't even. Oh. oh. Oh, Grey Worm got him. Good old Torgo Nudo. I'm just gonna call him Grey Worm. It's <laughs> too much for me. <laughs> oh, no. This is insane because I did not think it was going to go like this. Right, they've been talking about a great battle at King's Landing, but I never really pictured it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, remember when she walks into the thing and she sees the throne? Yeah. There's ash and stuff. Mm -hmm. and we thought it was snow. Yeah. It's her burning it, huh? That's what it seems like. But she hasn't like went to the, like the Red Keep or anything yet. That's where Cersei's at. Right, she hasn't like made it to the throne, you know, where the actual throne, which she saw in the prophecy. So that's why I'm kind of like, I don't know what that's about to happen. Yeah, she's probably about to go kill Cersei. <sighs> oh, Cersei, what you gonna do now? Ah! 
Wow. Ivory? Your Grace? All we need is one good shot. The Scorpions have all been destroyed, Your Grace. The Iron Fleet hold Blackwater Bay. Your run killed one of her dragons. He can kill another. Your Grace, the Iron Fleet is burning. Wow. The gates have been breached. The, the Golden Company. Our men will fight harder than Sellswords ever could. They will defend their queen to the last man. Yes, Your Grace. The Red Keep has never fallen. It won't fall today. She doesn't look so sure about that, does she? Right, because like, does she remember the atonement? Does she remember that? They don't like her. <laughs> No, I'm kind of like fire and blood. Question mark? Move! Move! I'm stressed. <laughs> Oh, that's that bell. And it hasn't went off yet. Not yet. <gasps> Make it there, Jamie. I don't know what I want. <laughs> I don't know. I'm yeah, exactly. This is just tough, man. I'm like, make it there, Jamie. Burn somebody. I don't know. Kill Cersei, but save her. I love it. <laughs> like, who do I love? I don't know. Those aren't soldiers right there. Right. Those are some nugs. No, she's letting them be. <laughs> Ring the bell, basically. Yes. Threw down his sword. Let's go. Ring the bell. Cersei thought they were going to fight for her, and they just were like... I'm surprised they fought that hard. I wouldn't fight for her. The queen has to say it? Well, duh, right? Her dream's coming true. You see her? Do you see her? Oh, what's gonna happen? Oh! Y'all better start ringing, ding, ling, lingin'. I know, because Drogon's looking real mad. Come on, sirs. I know Dragon went from triplet to only child, all because of you. Don't you want her to just ring the bell and escape? Hell I kind of yeah. want her to escape with Jamie. I, I know that sucks. Probably unpopular opinion. <laughs> Thank God. Good job, sirs. Who's doing it? Sirs, she has to be the one, right? No, nah, hell no. I can go there and ring it myself. You better get to running, Cersei. Look, it came true. She's so emotional right she now. She looks pissed when I thought she'd be happy. Bro, she's going right to the red key. Oh. She's about to go snatch freaking Cersei out of it. Oh. Cersei, you better run. Or she's about to hair and haul her ass. That was in the, the, prophecy, the prophecy thing. It was, yeah, where they fly over. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was. She's got rabies, bro. Oh, she's... No. Oh, no. No. Look at Tyrion. What? 
Oh, her and Grey Worm are pissed. They're pissed at what they did to Masande, yeah. as they should be, but come on. Oh. Oh my god, look at Aegon. And then the North remembers, so you gotta go. Oh no. And Grey Worm sees Jonathan doing that. Well, I know we're supposed to talk and commentate, but I don't know what to say. Because I'm just like, much. I'm just like lost for words because, you know, I don't know what I wanted. Cersei. Man, this is just another day in the life of Cersei. She's trying to torch every inch of it, man. Maybe when she said destroy the world, she meant like just get rid of King's Landing as a whole. Oh, the Onion Knight. We got him his finest, baby. This is not leaving the world better than we left it. This is actually the most disturbing thing I think I've ever seen in Game of Thrones. Does that in the middle of a war? So weird. Like, aren't you concerned someone can come behind you and just do this right yeah, here? Yeah, old. Good job, John. Find somewhere to hide. Thanks, Sean. Oh. Man, you better run, Cersei. What? I cannot believe this is about to happen right here. I cannot believe this. Oh my. The That's dingy. the bow, yeah. Oh heck nah. Not who you want to see washed up. The Bro, they've had beef night. forever. Listen. That's the sound of a city dying. It's over. Well, maybe for you. If you kill another king before you die, they'll sing about you forever. You know king. Oh, but I am. <laughs> and I fucked the queen. Good job, bro. Are you trying to get, like, backhanded with that hand? <laughs> I'll bring your head to Cersei so you can kiss her. One last time. <laughs> Oh, shoot. I feel like I need to get up and walk. <laughs> this is horrific, man. This. Ugh. So instead of just killing Cersei easy, she's just making her suffer. She had every opportunity to leave that damn place. Come on, man. Jamie, come on, not to this guy. He took everything from you. Don't you want him to get him with the ultimate punch of that hand? I kind of want to see him cut his nuts off. Make him move. Oh, like that. That's what I wanted. Oh. 
No, 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 no. Not by your on. Not by your on. Of all people, Jamie, come on. He's gonna die before he sees her, man. Uh, oh no, man. Your Grace, it isn't safe here any longer. The Red Keep is the safest place in the city. The Unsullied have breached the gates of the Red Keep. Wow, this is so crazy. She's crying. Make us hold fast would be a better place to wait out the storm. I bring you loyal AF, bro. He really is. Wow, it's igniting those ones. <sighs> Maybe she planted wildfire or something. I don't know. Well, no, the the Before, king, well. the Mad King did that. Explain. The Mad King did that. That's he. Remember, Jamie knew about those. He was about to ignite all the ones in the under the city. Well, Cersei only lit the one under the Baylor, the Septa Baylor, but there was all they're all over the city. Oh, I see. So she's got the whole thing rigged up, huh? She doesn't. The Mad King did. Right. She just knew about it. That's insane. Okay, I see what you're saying. Wow. Okay. We fought well for Cribble. Man. Let's go, Jamie. Again? Oh. Get him! Yeah! Uh. Satisfying, satisfying, satisfying the death. The most right annoying here. character in this whole show. Uh. I'm not looking for you. You don't count. Mm-hmm. You're in the water to go drown yourself in. But I got you. Oh, he did get him. I got though. you. I'm the man who killed Jamie Lannister. He's Imagine that being out. your dying words, though. He was always so simplistic in his mind. Be the king, screw the queen. When you screw the queen, you become fleet. the king. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> That's how the math works, okay? Math with the year on. Go home, go. Fire will get her. Or one of the Dothraki. That dragon will eat her. <laughs> Doesn't matter, she's dead. And you'll be dead too if you don't get out of here. I'm going to kill her. You think you wanted revenge a long time? I've been after it all my life. It's all I care about. And look at me. Look at me! You want to be like me? Oh, he's trying to save her, babe. Mm -hmm. You come with me. You die here. Oh, The Hound Redemption arc. Sandor. Sandor. Thank you. Mmm. God, that sucks because, man, this is one of my favorite relationships in the series. Right. It was the usage of the freaking real name for me. Like, so humanizing and touching. Yes. <laughs> Always when they use the government in the show. It's... That's Kai Burn with the sideburn, baby. <laughs> oh. Dang, the mountain's strong as hell. Did you see that? Well, he's like a zomb. <laughs> Was that the mountain? Yeah, it looked like it. No. Oh, they just had the same armor. So. Trying to trick us. <gasps> hey, Grace. Five on pay-per-view, boys. Main event. Let's go. Bro, he's doing all this off his back foot. That ain't your big brother no more, honey. We don't know who that is. Gregor, stay by my side. Sir Gregor, I command you. Obey your queen, Sir Gregor. Ooh. Oh, shoot. Oh, my God. Bye, Kyburn. You are awesome. He wasn't Kyburnt. 
Jeez, okay, fine. Let's just get over that real quick. Stab her. She's like, it's none of my business. It walks on the stickers. Well, the hound didn't want to take another innocent, well, in his mind, another soul before. This one right here. Yeah, because he said he's about to die. This is the one he's been wanting his whole life. The man oh. got jaundice. He looks like um, the guy in Guardians of the Galaxy, Drax. Mm-hmm. It's pretty mean to Drax. I love Drax, though, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, look at it. Just... Yeah, broken half. She's all old, man. Oh, no. Sir Jamie! <gasps> King Slayer. Cause that's how I feel about you right now. Oh. Why do I love this when he just betrayed Brienne? I don't know. Cause it's not really for her, it's for Jamie. You know? You're hurt. Yeah, he's not even like his brother anymore. He's just chasing his tail at this point. Unfazed by that. Do you actually do it again, it tickled. That sucks to fight someone like that. Oh, that was her. Oh, I was about to say, I hope that wasn't his wife. So many people are just sitting there, just waiting. Holy shoot. This is nuts. I don't know, man. I get that. Like, I get that they killed Masande and Danny feels like no one loves her and she's all alone in the world, but this is pretty, pretty extreme. Well, after like 60 buildings, I would be like, dude. I was mad, but I'm down, but... To be honest, the hound sort of gets handled by everybody. I know, Brian's over there like, thank you for my credit. Get up. Get up. That's so sweet, someone trying to help her. Oh my gosh. That's like in Battle of the Bastards when John got trampled. Very similar. No. Fuck, I died. Like what? Yeah. <gasps> oh, no, dude, I can't watch another over in. I can't. I can't do it. I'll die. Dude. He's crushed his whole head in at this point. Ah, oh, man. Oh, and it still doesn't even, he just. There's no killing him. Ah. Oh. My brain's sore. Nah, oh, man. Clegane's gonna die in the fire. Part of the impact of the fall, but still. That sucks for the hound, for real. Oh shit. So basically, there's just no satisfying her blood thirst right now. Right. I... She just wants blood and fire. Get out of the session! I 
AC attacks over. That's Arya. No. Please tell me no. That actually scared the hell out of me because I wasn't sure if they'd actually do that or not. Right. Because it's the end of the series. You know what I'm saying? Like, anything goes. Did you see that blood squirting out of her neck? Oh. Oh. This is insane. Dude, run. Oh my gosh. You can't stay here. You have to keep moving. We can't go out there. You have to. Everyone out there is dead. If you stay here, you'll die. You know something I just thought about? What? Why does the force of fire knock over buildings? That's not really. Maybe it melts it, then the structure just collapses. So instantaneously. Ah. Are they alive? Oh no. So the, the Thraki just riding around slicing up moms, huh? We have to keep you. That one has little horns. Oh, it's blocked. I want to be able to live. Don't let me die, Jake. Please don't let me die. Please don't let me die. A lot of pressure. Look at me. Look at me. I don't like this. Look at me. Look at me. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. I knew they were going to play the song in a way to make me upset. <laughs> they used it for evil. Oh, that one got you. Well, this whole thing's made me tear up. This thing's not good at all. It sucks to see Jamie. He should have just stayed with Brienne and let her just die by herself. I don't know that I kind of, I'll tell you how I feel about that at the end. It was like. That was that couple, huh? Or that was that mom and her daughter. Yeah. <laughs> the one she was running with. That's the toy. Where did a horse come I from? I know. It's like, is she alive? <laughs> oh, he just ganned off. You know how when people die, they like go off into like, on like, a white light or something. That's what it seems like. She's about to like die. It's giving me like apocalyptic vibes. The Bible or something. It's so beautiful. Wait a minute. So Bran knew all this was going to happen? I don't know. Like, is that what you're saying? Because he knows the past and the future, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, he probably knows, but he just ain't telling nobody because maybe he can't change it like the Watcher. Because if he interferes, maybe it will mess something up. Damn, that's it. There's one more episode of this. Whew, okay. Um, do you need a minute? Are you good? Are you, you chill? Yeah. Are you chill? <laughs> I'm pissed. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm shocked. I'm shocked too. Okay, guys. So how in the seven kingdoms do we unpack this one? <laughs> Babe, just please start for me, man. Just tell me what we just saw. Okay. Let's start by saying, asking you with this outcome right here, how do you feel about it? Are you happy or are you like, yeah, let us go ahead and let us know in the comments, man. Everything we're about to say, please let us know where we're going, where we're getting off on the wrong foot, where we're missing stuff. Because I definitely, you know, I have a lot of opinions about this, you know, and 
I just want to hear what you guys have to say. Right. Let us know was that was this the ending you wanted? Yeah, and I know it's not the end yet, right, but right. dude, we got one more episode, right. and that to be honest, that didn't end in a way that one more episode is going to satisfy me. Exactly, like, what in exactly. The world? Unless that it's like a six-hour episode. Hour long. <laughs> yeah. Um. So let us know, man. Did Daenerys do the right thing? Uh, just talk about it in the comments. But guys, basically, well, let me pull up my let me pull up my trusty rusty uh let me pull up my trusty rusty episode. I like to just be able to scroll through so I can keep the timeline in order. So man, this episode started out with Varys. Varys was uh sending a raven and he wanted to spread the good word that John is not John, he's Aegon Targaryen, the rightful heir to the throne, and Tyrion of all people intercepted it outed and him. outed him man and that kind of broke my heart i thought it was really it's just touching because T Tyrion, in, in so many ways does have great character he's doing the best he can do and he didn't want to betray the queen in her time of need right so he did quote unquote the right thing with Varys, <laughs> you know and right is such a fluid thing sometimes was it the right thing and i guess it's one of those things you just don't know i mean it's dependent on the future so he outed Varys, and man, just like she promised, she burned Varys alive. And his last words were chilling. Like, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. Like, I hope I'm wrong. I hope everything you guys are killing me for, you're doing it because you're protecting the realm yourself. I guess one of the cool things about this episode is we get to talk about characters with finality now. Varys truly was a man who, even though he had to get his hands dirty, he had to be a little slimy sometimes. He understood that. There was a vacancy for that position and the game needed to be played. He was someone who genuinely wanted the best for the realm. For and the I people, do, right? Yeah. I do believe if he would have saw what would just what would have happened just now, you know, he definitely he has no regrets, basically, man. He was he was right in a sense. I didn't really understand why he was downing her so much at first, because that just sort of came out of left field to me. Right. But I think in this episode it kind of confirmed to me that he was more thinking along the lines of She's Targaryen. He's not thinking like, okay, what she's doing is exactly rash. It's just like he said it in this episode. You're flipping a coin when you have a Targaryen as your leader. So I think he's just saying like her, her like. They said that in the recap also. Yeah. Guys, in the recap, we usually edit out the recap. But just so you know, the recap has a lot of really telling information in it about what's going to happen in this episodes and stuff. And they were beaten they were definitely beating that nail on the head about her unpredictability. Her, right. So and every say. time the gods, you know, every time there's a Targaryen, the gods. And that's why I think breath. that's my only explanation for why Varys would be so jump shippy. Maybe in his mind. Well, no, because he supported her cost and then he supported Viserys's cost and he was a piece of crap. So I don't know, man, maybe. And but. Sorry, I'm trying to be sensitive about the subject because I know so many people are passionate. But Daenerys did say multiple times. I mean, all the, remembering Karth when she's like, "If you don't, if you don't let us in, I'm going to come back burn and I'm going to burn your cities yeah. to the ground." Like that's something that she's <laughs> been. It's almost like something she fantasizes about in a way. But, because it's but what then her people you have do. Tyrion and Jorah always checking her, so it's like. <clears throat> well, Jorah died. Yeah, Jorah died. What happened to Tyrion? Tyrion is just like she doesn't trust Tyrion. Tyrion everything she listens to Tyrion, what she has the right to not. Tyrion, trust Tyrion. gossip to Varys. Right, but also every time she trusts v Tyrion, some crazy junk happens. And it's just tough for Danny because regardless of how you want to slice it, she was betrayed by Tyrion. Yeah. That's a betrayal. I mean, if you're Tyrion and you're the smartest man, if you're clever, you know things, you drink wine, all that stuff, you have to know that telling. Telling Varys is is the last thing you want to do if you want to keep it a secret, especially if he's been very open, especially as open as he can be about the fact that, you know, uh, it was just so tough to watch. I, I didn't want her character to end up crazy. You know, the show really said pick a side, pick a coin. But she seemed she seen someone who was very self-righteous. She seemed like someone who put her head down and did what she perceived to be the right thing without mm -hmm. really thinking about what that looks like in reality a lot. But I did see her as a good, kind person. But towards the end, I don't see how you can chalk that up to good or kind in any type of way. I right. Mean, you just could see in her face ugh. when she was on the dragon, um, when the bells finally rang, you could see in her face where just her attitude shifted. Like everything, like, because in that moment, I was literally so happy for her. And I was expecting like her to have tears in her eyes. Like, I finally did it. I finally conquered King's Landing just like without with minimal casualties. And then it all just turns. But it all turns. And Her she face did, turns. But she did say though, 
remember she was pissed off and she was trying to she was trying to hop on Aegon Targaryen's um bandwagon and she basically got rejected by him and she said okay let it be fierce so that was pretty telling and if she just surrenders the minute that the army rings the bell and opens the gate well that's sort of what you want to do you want to save casualties on your side and the side that you're conquering because you don't want to dwindle your own army right so maybe her thing about fear was i'm going to be completely irrational and every time you think i'm gonna go left i'm gonna go right you know right, what i mean but, Never let them know but i was move. thinking like okay maybe you can get rid of the golden company okay but she destroyed a lot of king's landing so she's gonna she, rule nobody. She she's destroyed gonna be queen all of, of the it. queen of the ashes. Essentially. Absolutely. Yeah. There's not one piece <laughs> of infrastructure left in the city that's gonna be functionable at this point. I mean, she destroyed right. it so bad that even the sewers are probably caved in. They obviously they kill Varys. Yeah, they obviously kill him. Like we said, his last words were absolutely chilling. Then this war proceeds. Oh, well, before the war proceeds, Jamie gets one last chance. You know, Tyrion actually pays him the favor back um whenever Tywin was going to execute Tyrion Jamie you know let him escape and then you know Tyrion goes off and kills Tywin but more than just his hand on the line but right. his, he's about to walk around with a golden head right so it was nice to see that favor return and then seeing them hug we I felt like something was going to happen to one of them this episode because the hug was so like on closure like goodbye brother hug. yeah Absolutely. it wasn't like i hope i see you again i was like bye like love you you don't start bringing up your birth if you're not saying goodbye i mean it's right. just one of those things if you don't say like you're the only person who's ever done this for me one tough. thing i will say guys i don't love what daenerys did and i know a lot of people are probably mad about it me i, I love this i thought this was phenomenal mm-hmm. i thought this was a good episode it's probably not what a lot of people wanted but I wouldn't change a thing. Like I thought it was so much more interesting this way. And Jamie obviously is a foot soldier on his way back to King's Landing. It was just so sad, man. Basically, he finally met up with Cersei, which was remember when he was talking to um Edmure? Yeah. Or who was he? He was talking to someone. I think it was Edmure. He said he wants to die in the arms exactly, of the woman he loves. Exactly what no, I was gonna say. It was Braun. But you know what I'm saying Bron, though. Because Braun was like, right. I wanna die, you know, and I bring up the Edmure conversation every time. Because that was a good Jamie. one. That it was, was the best one. conversation, yeah. It and, was the most real dialogue besides him and Brienne in that hot tub. And why I it loved it so much is because it just came full circle. And what he said in that tent, he meant. Yeah, he like, meant he it. He really only loved Cersei. And so when we saw him doing that with Brienne, we didn't know this was going to happen. So I'm over here like, dang it, Jamie, God dang you. But then that's what I'm trying to say, you guys. In that moment when he actually went to Cersei and hugged her and like that's how they died. It was so poetic in a way that it was like, I'm going to cry because it was emotional. But it was so beautiful to me that the betrayal of him to Brienne was overlooked in that very moment. No lie. It was just crazy because, I mean, in that moment, Cersei was as vulnerable as she's ever been in the show. You know? She was like, don't look at me. And that part was tough to hear from someone as strong-willed as Cersei. Like, that was just right. that was just a woman at her end. You know what I'm saying? That was tough. I, just, I thought the irony of the Red Keep collapsing on her head. Uh, she could have left that place many times, especially over this last season or two. She had every opportunity to give away power. She had really no incentive to keep it. I mean, I understand that you say if she gives up power, she's going to be murdered, right? And that's probably true, right? But let's just say not. She could have relinquished that power. She knew she was going to die. And the irony of the Red Keep falling on her head. And it was just really sad because Jamie had like an amazing character. And Jamie's a character I hated in the beginning. And all you guys are, you'll love Jamie by the end. And you guys are right, okay? I'll admit it. Uh, favorite character in the show? Maybe. I mean, definitely maybe. So We're going to have to reflect on that when this is over. Like, who this is, is really yeah, our favorite? They're all the same. They're all so good. Because there's like, like days where they're, I told you, just different people are my favorite. They're so. all phenomenal. And it was just sad because sometimes in life, man, you know, you fall into like drug abuse and then you get your redemption story and it's a powerful story you tell and you learn from. And sometimes you Don't. fall into it, you do better, and then you fall back into <laughs> it and you die, man. And She's one of the cold hard realities, and that's what happened to Jamie. His character arc completely was addicted was, to Cersei. Yeah, man. And it just sucks to see. Maybe he just felt so guilty about who he was. Maybe that identity of you're a Kingslayer, you're a POS, you're terrible. It just weighed on him to the point to where he felt like the only way the universe spun correctly was if he was sitting there being a piece of crap with Cersei. Like if he was trying to do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like a lot of women in abusive relationships. <laughs> When they leave the relationship, it almost doesn't feel right to them. It feels like it's not the way it's supposed to be. And it'd be really hard to imagine what that would be like. But it's almost like Jamie was in that he just 
he was so loyal. Yeah. Because to, Cersei to demanded that. so much loyalty in a way that Jamie never really did. Right. Like, do you get what I'm trying to say? Right, because like just, she literally openly screwed Ru- Euron and Robert and Lance. Everybody, yeah. Yeah, and Jamie was very loyal to her until Brienne, which we thought was like the character arc thing. And let's be real, Brienne had to work him for seasons. Boy. Right. He was on her mind for a long time. Right. And yeah, it just goes to show how self indulging and self serving and self pleasure inducing Cersei was. And to be honest, man, I think she got what she deserved. I thought her character was phenomenal because, like I said, I love the idea of there's like a human knew, under there. Right. Sorry. Go, no, go, please no. go ahead. I was just saying, kind of like what Tyrion said to Jamie. We all knew who she was, but we loved her anyways. <laughs> like, that's just how Cersei's character was to me. Like, she sucked. She did all this stuff. But you love her character because for me as like, you know, someone who has kids, I feel her. Right. In that way. And it's and a little weird to real. admit, but a lot of you guys understand if you have kids, you, like if you see someone in need, of course you'll help them and all. But at the end of the day, man, not really much else matters. At least not to me. Like without my kids, I don't really know what my purpose would be, you know? Um, and that's I, how Cersei felt. I felt like she embodied a mother as a character, even though like, you know, she did some bad things. But she was a mother, and, like, for other mothers, you can kind of respect that. I can understand her because, like, when I was 10, I was scared of breaking my arm because it hurt, right? But now that I'm a grown man, breaking my arm doesn't scare me. Dying doesn't scare me. Burning alive in a building, it, it doesn't scare me. I'm sure it would be scary in the moment, but I'm okay with that. But something happening to your kids, not being <laughs> there, you know, your kids not knowing what their next step's going to be. Just their lives being wrecked like that. That's the most scary thing. And I think that's what motivated Cersei to keep that power. And because hopefully because was it you were we talking about this on here or not? But we were talking about on here because, you know, we we have off camera conversations, but we were talking about how Braun wanted a castle. So, like, it wasn't just his safety. It's his family's. Well, yeah, that's how you secure your life. And that's how I feel like Cersei was doing in the end. She was trying to secure the child she was having because if she just gave it up, it's either your death or you're going to have to be exiled. So Right. And I can understand, like, she's not dumb. She listened to Tywin speak her whole life, and she made it very clear. Like, she did learn a lot from him. It, anyone anyone from Westeros has to be willing to fight and die before they want to see a Targaryen on the throne. Right. And and because, that's that's just what the Mad King gave everybody, you well, know? Because even if Danny was the best person, the best angel to ever grace the earth, man— and in so many ways, especially in this world, man, in so many ways, she really was. She was ahead of her time. Mm-hmm. I genuinely believe she had a kind, gentle soul. I just think that, like, I, I've said it multiple times, man. She was a beautiful soul in an impossible situation. Yeah. And I, I do empathize with her, even though, you know, what she did in the end was very impulsive and disgusting. But it's just like getting pushed so far to so many different lengths. And I guess the realization of, you know, in season one, when Viserys was like, they're going to say, they're, I'm going to come to King's Landing and they're going to throw banners and say, oh, I, I saved them and all this stuff. Well, Danny realized she wasn't going to get that, period. She thought, yeah, she thought she'd be greeted as the liberator. And she, and she realized when she did that at the beginning and she looked up and she realized, like, I'm in a foreign land. I don't know where I'm at. No one really likes me. What am I doing? Like, that's what it felt like. I felt like I saw that in her. I could be completely wrong. But... Like Tyrion said in the episode before, she's been a prophetic lady who walked through fire, got three stones, and, you know, she probably expected something crazy to happen when she finally got the city, and it just didn't. Well, she made it very clear, though. Like, that's one of the reasons why, like, I know a lot of people hate when I say anything negative about Daenerys Targaryen. I get it. But she even said in the show herself, if innocent people have to die, if kids have to be burned alive, it's okay, actually. Because in her mind, you know, she was thinking big picture so like she a was, bigger picture than any of us think you know what i'm saying she which is kind of narcissistic right. and arrogant like you know and so in her mind she thought well pain and destruction and you know a horrific situation now will prevent tragedies in the future and i just think that like i said man doing things like that i don't i don't really know like i, I know some <laughs> people in life have to make hard decisions you know like if you're going to be the one to drop a nuclear bomb you know or, or like if if you're commanded to do that and you're the foot soldier who has to like actually get it done, you know, are you as guilty? It's one of those type of things, you know, I, I just empathize with her character. I think, I think that if you're her, if you're Daenerys and you're sitting there and you're looking at the world 
and you're seeing everything that goes on. I mean, every time you travel to a different city, they have little slave girls put up on crosses, right. crucified. You cannot you just seeing that in itself would make you want to burn the world down and all of yeah, us are pressured, right? I, mean, like, it, I get it. It's a sh shitty world. It's Loki. the worst. <laughs> it's the worst type of world, man. It's the right. it's the toughest world. Even at the Night's Watch in that conversation with Sam, who was it? Aegon? Who was it? I think it was a I think it was Eamon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eamon. I'm tripping. Eamon Eamon told Sam. That's who it was. It was Sam. He was talking to Sam. Right? Yeah. Eamon told Sam. I was about to say uh Ed, but I'm I'm an idiot. He told Sam that a Targaryen alone in the world is a scary thing. And for us, we were like, so like you don't even know her, but at the time we're like, you don't even know He was thinking more of like genetically because they need because they need right. some so they like, I guess they need someone to check their impulses. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe I mean, they everybody, always need, you always do need that, but maybe it's just Targaryens in particular because. Well, they have dragons. So and, if, yes. if my impulses get out of whack, you know, you can get some dude 250 to come on and slap me inside my head. It's cool. Her impulses get out of line. Like what you going to do? Nothing. Right. Like, absolutely nothing. You're going to burn. So. That was a good callback there that you just meant brought up because yeah, like, <laughs> that's the truth. Like they've kind of been hitting at this in a sense now that you sort of think about it. Uh, they've they've always been kind of making us wonder: Will she be that type of person? Like I never, yeah. I subconsciously thought it, but I never like sat there and was like, "Will Danny be that type of person?" Because in the direction Danny was going for me, I never thought it would come to that. I thought she was always on the right path because she was doing the right things to get there guess i'm dungeon dragons <laughs> um what was you saying i was I, I don't even know anyways man everything is going according to plan everyone's chilling everyone's riding your boy the knockoff pirate pulls up <laughs> was dead may never die uh wanna be theon and guys i've been hating on this character and i understand that in the book he was something to talk about but this character in the show has gotten on my damn nerves <laughs> so much more than you guys will ever know um, he's been literally guys if you've played mario kart and you get the banana slip he is the banana slip he really that's is that's who you're on is but that's not to say that like his face gets on my nerves or any of that because it does but i'm just saying <laughs> it's more of just the fact that i think his character is just so obnoxious in this show like the show had a certain i just didn't like his character to be honest man I, I really didn't but with that being said it doesn't really matter but he pulls up out of nowhere decides that everyone on the fleet should take shots at dragons besides himself who was three for three right i guess he graduated dragon, yeah he graduated up and he's above that i guess he's management now <laughs> yeah so he went missed a couple shots fleets got burned it went down sort of like battle of the bastards the golden company didn't, didn't, don't they give you like Battle of the Bastards vibes when the guy was yeah. sitting there and all the Dothraki were and coming then out? And then does nothing besides get chopped up. The Golden Company, who Cersei had a lot of faith in, they get absolutely destroyed. Um, the dragons pick them off super easy. I don't know if elephants. It wasn't just difference. Cersei who had a lot of faith in it. It was the history and lore who had a lot of faith in them too. So they made we thought they were something. really something. But but what, we didn't have their stakes against what is the, What is the most powerful? <laughs> What is what is the British army prepared to nuclear bombs? You know, I mean, what I is mean, anything what, what, to hey. nuclear bombs? And so, yeah, you you saw how that ended up. And eventually, man, the city realized that this was a battle that they're obviously not going to be able to win. All the scorpions got taken out. I thought the scene with Kyburn walking in to have one last conversation with Cersei was was just crazy, man, because she's still trying to hold on to that fake warping, trying to. You know what I'm saying? She's calling on her inner Tywin at that moment. We still have scorpions. We yep. still have this. Yeah. And he's sitting there saying, "No, no, no. Everything. It's over, basically, girl. You're, you're dead. We should. We should try Plan B." In that moment, when she closed her eyes and a tear came down her eye, and she realized, like, I lost. I just knew her face probably wasn't going to be good. At like, her all. escaping sounds good, but how does Cersei Lannister escape? You know, realistically. Right. It'd have been interesting, and then they would have had a knockoff series where her and Jamie were in Pintos trying to like. Yeah. Raise a family. <laughs> I wish that when the bell rung, Daenerys would have just went, marched up there, celebrated her victory, took her throne. But guys, if you really think about it, say me and you set out to conquer the world together. It doesn't matter if I conquer the world. If you die in the process, then it's it's just, I mean, you guys can understand. I, I'm put yourself in her position. Everyone, she was doing it for those people, for herself, for her legacy, for so many things. And the people to her side, too. But, yeah, but those people, they weren't, like Masande. Masande wasn't just her friend. That was someone that she freed from the worst mm -hmm. type of bondage. And she just let her down, man. And in her mind, she probably felt like she had just as much doing. 
I'm struggling to like, I'm struggling to talk right now. Like I'm fumbling over my words a lot because this episode was just so heavy and I'm, I'm having a really hard time describing the emotions and the, I guess like the impact and how real and how hurtful Daenerys would re- or how in pain she would be in real life. And there's nothing, I mean, not all the money in the world could take back or could bring back your best friend. And mm-hmm. she lost so many people. And I, I really do think that that's why you, we can be mad at her for them being the mad queen or whatever. I'm not that mean. I but, mean, I'm not that mad. But she, but I mean, a lot of people probably were, I'm sure. But you have to understand like how far she got pushed and it was constant. It was constant. Even every time she would do, have anything happen to Marine, even the smallest, slightest little thing, they turned on her so quickly. So it would be hard to not want to rule with fear, but like. That's all she had. She didn't have another it, option. Right. You either yeah. love me or fear me. And as good as she was to people, as fair as she tried to be. She wasn't always fair. She made a couple mistakes for sure. And some terrible mistakes. Um, some of them you could argue those mistakes were in line with the traditions of Westeros. But she's talking about breaking the wheel now. You have to remember that. So you can't just use history as an excuse for your <laughs> bad right. actions. You have to be better than that. That was your whole thing. I just think at the end of the day, I empathize with her. I think me personally, I, I do not have the mental maturity, the mental makeup and the impulse control to be a king. Right. <laughs> I would never want to be a king. I would never accept kingdomhood. If I was a king, I'd be a tyrant. I would probably make all of you a lot less free. And if you got on my nerves, I'd probably <coughs> burn your villages down. Uh, what? <laughs> not, I mean, not really. But what I'm just saying is, even in, like, I think that I'd be a great king. I'd do my best. But it's just such an impossible role. And and also, you have to take into mind that it's not this world yet we're ruling. It's a Westeros, which is like a whole different, you know. It's right. a whole different I, it's a whole situation. Different, yeah. Well, most of us sit on the couch. A lot of people have to play the games of the world. So it's really easy to judge those people and say they're terrible and tyrants. But at the end of the day, man, it's just a tough world. And I do blame her. I think she was wrong. I think I think I think it was evil. I think what she did was evil. I think right. she's a mad queen. I think she's an evil person. I think that she'll go down as the most infamous Targaryen maybe ever, you know, and I think she deserves every bit of it. But that just goes to speak about how sometimes life is a lot more black and white, not just how evil Daenerys was. I mean, we can sit there and say her actions were terrible and evil, but all I'm saying, man, is her story was so complex and deep, and it's just hard to blame her right. in a way. It's almost like it would have been a miracle if she wouldn't have done that. Right. And and think about it. Like, if the British Army would have came in and, like, murdered just one of my kids, right? If if a British soldier murdered my kid, I would want the whole army burned. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just on a human level. Like, I would never forgive that. I would want to see the whole army suffer. And, you know, and that's just, you know, and I'm only saying all this, guys, because really I think a lot of people are going to hate on Daenerys, and I think a lot of people are going to, hate on me because I don't love Daenerys. I think a lot of you are going to hate on me because I didn't go at her hard enough. You can't win, but I do. I just feel, I just feel like indifferent about it. I feel like I just am upset that it had to happen like that, but I understand why it did because not only did she get pushed, but like we said, she's prophetic. So like when, when she's having these prophecies, when she walked through fire and it said, burn them all, what do you, what do you think? You know, I don't know what you think. I've it's never your, had, it's your destiny. To right. I've never had in this world visions like, like that to know. So, at the same time, when when you do that and that's all that's running through your head, you've lost everyone. There's no one to tell you like different. OK, so imagine your vision. God tells you, you know, in this universe, quote unquote, you look in and you see King's Landing on fire. You see kids on fire. You see horrible things happening and you think to yourself that's terrible, but it's my destiny. It's evil, but it's, it's 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 so hard to do. But it's my destiny, and in the long run, it's gonna work out because it's for the it's for the greater good. The army of the dead was almost, in a sense, like powers beyond those that be, sending a whole army of dead after them. In a sense, like mm. you get what I'm trying to say. The rules of this world aren't very yeah easy to abide by. I mean, there was literally a whole army of the dead that was gonna destroy every man, woman, and child. So after you face that, then maybe from her perspective, like. Killing a couple hundred thousand people at King's Landing in the grand scheme of things maybe ain't that bad if it can bring a thousand years of peace. Right. But like I said, then you got to have enough self awareness to realize if your whole thing is you're going to break the will, you're just a Targaryen. That's like a Clinton saying they're going to, you know what I'm saying, change up Washington and then electing another Clinton. You right. know, like it's just they're a family that's been in politics forever. So it's just hard, man. It's really difficult. 
And I just thought it was an incredible episode. Right. I know I'm a lot of so upset, interested but... to think of other people's opinions on it. Seriously. In particular, dude. this yes. one. Like, I think of every episode that we've seen. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've all, I've been, I feel like we've all can relate on how to feel like the red wedding, the purple wedding, any of the freaking weddings, you know what I'm saying? Any of the crazy things that have happened in this, I think we all can be like, kind of feel the same way. And guys, but I, this one, I feel like we might all differ. Well, I do want to say if there's someone out there and you have an impulse to comment, and say actually October blah 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 and if it's something that maybe I said that I didn't agree with or maybe I missed it I just want you to know 300% if I read your comment a part of me is gonna feel you dude like I, I hear you you know what I mean so many times people has corrected me about whether it be Theon or Sansa or just whoever the case may be man so many characters and I just want you guys to know I think all of your opinions are extremely insightful and that's what makes this show the best man love love the character hate the character you can't argue that there's so many deep, complex ways right. to understand. And the in character. a sense, we're reacting on the impulse of just seeing it for a first time. Exactly. So you have to keep that in mind. We don't right. have book background or even the luxury of watching this more than once. So the first time you see it, you have to remember how you kind of felt. And if it's not the same as us, then you can enlighten us and tell us why. But, you know, it's different because we're first time viewers. <laughs> if I watch the whole series again, the weight of the political ramifications of the situations that Tyrion, Daenerys, Cersei, all these characters find themselves in, they would probably hit so different. I, I would have think such waiting a weekly would change that as well. I just think my perspective would be so radical because I have hindsight. Right. Like hindsight really is the biggest changer of mm -hmm. perception. So God, what do we even say about this, man? This was this was <laughs> this was the best episode. Bar oh, we didn't so even far. talk about the the Clegane's fighting in junk. So Clegane went ham on his brother, man. Uh, his brother's a hard dude to put to sleep. I'll well, Clegane, what. they're both Clegane's, baby. What did I say? It's a, it's Gregor and Sandor. Yeah, no. yeah. But you said Clegane went at him. At uh, well, his brother ain't a Clegane no more. He's oh, just the the mountain. mountain I mean, sign, he's not yeah. even a human. He doesn't have like he's you know. Well, that he's is a true. Zombie. That is true. He's the only cool game to me. The other one died. Yeah, yeah. facts. Which, which guys, I just want to say in that moment right before like they fought when Arya called him Sandor, best moment I would say of this. Was that episode. your favorite? That one was good. It that was one a good about one. made me cry because I love the hound. It was a good one because Arya and the hound's relationship is, you know, you guys know in this series it was arguably some of the best like back and forth. And honestly, Arya never had like a dad. So, well, she, you know, she did have a dad, but you know what I'm saying, like. She, as an adult-ish type girl, well, she never had it. In dad. her most influential years, her preteen. Yeah. And it was kind of good to be with someone like the Hound because, you know, she didn't want to be a lady. She didn't want to do this and that. And the Hound kind of didn't make her do it. <laughs> like, he would kind of, like, yeah. let her do her thing. <laughs> like, she wanted to be like that, and he was not going to tell her, no, she can't. Etiquette was not something the Hound was particularly big on, but that's okay. It we was beautiful all the same. Their relationship. I just don't really understand the hound in a sense. Like I do understand. Like at that point, he was so dug in on the fact that he needed to go have this fight. He was so dug in on the revenge, and it was almost like a it was like a habit to him at this point. Yeah. Because logically speaking, there was no reason for him to go die in that battle. Like that was the most pointless death maybe of this whole entire show. He basically, well, I guess in a sense, he did feel the need to destroy Cersei's weapon. You know. So maybe maybe in that sense, but he should have just let that man burn or get collapsed on or whatever the case may be. He should have just left that alone. The Hound was someone who was deeply unhappy, uh, deeply disturbed, honestly lived with a lot of fear and anxiety, which didn't really come out a lot in the show, but he definitely did, had a lot of trauma. I think him, the only thing that was ever going to finish them demons off for him, man, was just to fight his brother, I think. Right. I mean, I think that's just the only way the story ends. And I think it became almost like a mental... He was in that mindset his whole life, basically, because it happened when they were kids, that he was so mentally disturbed and far gone right. that at any... It sucks he had to die by getting burnt. And what he yeah. said to, Sa to Arya to me wasn't, hey, if you come up here, you're going to be, you know, revenge thirsty. What he's saying is, like, over time, you're going to literally change the brain chemistry in your head right this you're is no way to changing. live yeah, at all like, you're gonna become very sick mentally and i thought that was beautiful that was he like ended up the best life. group of i mean that was the best words of advice he could ever give Arya. i think because she listened and left and survived maybe i think that was survival <laughs> well Arya did him a favor one time she left him and she didn't leave him for dead she left him for life <laughs> yeah. and at the time it was hard to understand that and hard to see that but in hindsight it was very obvious especially as their friendship blossomed 
Yeah. I just love their relationship. That's what this show was, man. This was a game of relationships, politics, um, little, just little moments of how you look at each other. All those moments sort of added up to create all these deep, rich relationships. And I think that's going to be the hardest thing about finishing the show mm -hmm. is not really being done with an amazing show, but it's like saying goodbye to like some homies we've had right. for a while. And so something else, guys, that I love about the show is not only just like you can tell what a character is like feeling like or anything like that just based off their costume, but also the way they just address one another, whether it's your grace, whether it's saying Sandor, right. whether it's it's just weird how just you saying someone's name or whatever changes just the emotion of it. It's, so basically, it's interesting. Mrs. October really appreciates Westerosi culture. She finds it very <laughs> deep and enriching. She thinks the grammar <laughs> has a lot of significant meaning and she finds a lot of value in the way people communicate with each other in a way that in our modern society, we don't quite do. Everything's a lot more shallow. And, yeah, because and guys, I used to get I smacked in my face or whatever. Sorry, mom, if you're hearing that. I used to get beat up if I didn't say yes, ma'am and yes, sir. And she knows that. She knows she was the one delivering the punishments. But if I didn't say yes, ma'am and yes, sir, I would get slapped. So like it's refreshing in this time in society to just, you know, see people address each other in terms. I know that's an unpopular opinion for some, but I'm Southern. So if that puts anywhere, that if was I didn't how say we yes, raised. sir, to my dad, it was a straight open right. hand slap right to the face. And I mean, some people might not agree with that. But, you know, when you're raised like that, that's just what you know. And that feel like that's we ain't it saying was. do it. Your kids, we're right. just saying that's what we got. Yeah, that's what we got. And that's that's probably why we're. Yeah, know. I do appreciate the way that respect and honor and all that's emphasized in this world but all that stuff means so much and is so deep and is rich but at the same time in this world people screw their brothers and right it means stuff till it doesn't in the show uh, yeah and exactly you know it means stuff in certain situations for some it's more of just it's, it's it creates a nice illusion it creates a nice illusion of a nice polite society you know i think like in an old society like this you know the future is anything you want it to be and in our modern society, it sort of feels like we live in the future, so it's harder to be optimistic yeah, about it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I thought it was very sweet how Arya essentially, it's almost like she served the dead, right? And then in the end, she tried to completely revert that and help the living in a sense, you mm -hmm. know? So I thought that was really sweet. And she just ran around helping people. And I thought it was nice how, for really like the first time, some random person just showed her. Well, I guess Arya has been shown some. It's Sansa who has never been shown kindness, right? Right. Well, but, she did by the Hound, but that's neither here nor yeah. there. So Arya basically became a uh, like a field nurse, which was great. She was just trying to help people. Yeah, she was that. like Desmond Doss. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> One thing I thought was very weird, man, is a horse popped up and she rode off on it. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe she got lucky. Maybe it was Bran warging her a horse. I don't really know, man. But I just don't really know where that horse came from, to be honest with you. So that sort of threw me off. I'm not right. Was it, it life or was it death? That's the confusing part. Because sometimes when you're dead, like I said, you think of the last moments of your life. And that could have been Arya's like little last goodbye, maybe. I don't well, know. I don't, I don't think she's dead, but you're thinking that it symbolizes I, yeah i think it's a symbol for something i don't know so the horse please let us know in the comment section that was the one thing in this episode that i just thought was very odd i, I didn't really understand it i mean shoot and that was the episode guys uh arguably one of my favorites only because it was just all what we've been waiting for y'all like that was what we've been waiting for since season one in my opinion it was definitely the most epic episode it was oh, definitely yeah. the most consequential and if you want to go with how it was shot just from like a, a visual standpoint incredible everything we know and love about king's landing was just like destroyed if cersei's game plan was to sit there and allow the city to see how much of a tyrant daenerys targaryen was she well wouldn't. played cersei lannister because yeah. you definitely accomplished that the problem is there's not really many people left to, to say Haha, i told you so um guys this episode was literally like freaking dragons flying around dropping bombs this episode was amazing uh very high, very highly emotional episode. I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of opinions, as we should. And guys, we're going to be back with the season finale. So we have one more episode to finish this incredible story. I don't know how on earth that's going to be possible. I feel like maybe that should have been a season finale. And man, I, I don't know. This. Well, we have to know what happens after. We have to know what happens after all that. Well, yeah, but I feel like that would have been a great way to end the story. The cities, or not the story, it would have been a great way to end the season. The city's destroyed. Arya rides off. 
we need a whole season to to put the pieces back together. Yeah, we I can't mean, do it in an episode. I mean, like, that's going to be crazy. Did this, John and Daenerys break up, though? I don't know. <laughs> I think at this point, dude, I think at this point, he They're probably broken up. <laughs> they broke up. He might call her to hit it one more time. But then after that, bro, he's done. He's done. Um, I do think... Let me just say this. I do think that... Dang, what was I going to say? I was gonna I'm was sorry. Say no, 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 you're good. You're good. I, I was going to say something. What I was going to say was, I do think that this story started out... It was a slow burn. It was about deep conversations, long eye looks, politics, unspoken body language. I do think it was a lot about that. And... We have one episode to essentially to leave us, man. We have one episode to basically get closure. So in a story that's been about deep conversations in politics, I really hope they do a good job closing out the story. Oof. I don't know if you guys are upset. I know a lot of people. Okay. So a lot of people said, oh, this story sucks. Wait to the end. You'll hate it. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know if it's because the next episode we're about to see, or if it's because of this episode. I mean, I guess it's because Danny went crazy and destroyed everybody. Right. But it could be the way they end it, man, because a lot of shows infamously end horrible. Like a lot of people hated the way Lost ended. I actually didn't mind it that much. Um, eh, how do I feel about it? Do you remember how I felt about it? Yeah, and Lost. Just spoiler: alert, if you haven't seen Lost, basically everyone lives their life. Some people live longer. Some people died when they died. But basically, everyone lived their life in a linear way. And then when they all died, they basically went to somewhere. Oh, and met up. In and the, they met yeah, up yeah. in the afterlife. Yeah. Honestly, basically. guys, I think I like that because I loved Lost. I loved season one of Lost the most. It was feel good for sure. Yeah. But but if it's something of the same nature, it, it, it could be great, too. Hopefully this ends amazing, guys. Uh, I personally don't really have any issues with it. So I'm personally going to be cool. But I guess we'll see, man. So. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Like, comment, subscribe. Please let us know in the comment section what we forgot to say. There are so many thoughts and ideas that were left unsaid in this video. Please, please let it, let us know. And it's not really so much. It's not really so much for you guys. Really, it's, it's so much. It's really for us. I mean, we like to read them, and we like to read them, especially before we get into the next episode, because we like to hear you guys' comments and input and take them into consideration, and then go into the next episode with all that stuff in mind. So. Guys, y'all have been some absolute goats. If you are a goat out there, uh, steer clear of dragons, and we'll see you <laughs> on the next one.